I have this. This is on June 3rd. You have a second one. Um, and every time I check the, the meter, it says free parking. Tell her that. Yeah, Talk into the mic so I can hear you. Tell her it was 1,100. <clears throat> this defendant comes to court not knowing everything she's been prosecuted for. But upon appearing in court, she seemed like she didn't want to be there. You're sleeping. <laughs> you have two tickets. No, I got one ticket. No, you have two. One is on July 21st on Darren Street. I only received one. Then you have another one on August 1st on Corinth. She claims she only got one ticket and she happened to have the date memorized. She also had the ticket in hand to show Judge Caprio. But the judge knows what he's talking about. He can't be accusing her of something if he wasn't sure it's true. I received ticket from that. Well, who else drives the car besides you? Somebody else drives the car besides no, you. No, no. I'm the only person that drives the car. You're the only person that drives it? Yeah. Do you remember being on Darren? The documents are right there with him, and he knows for her not to remember, some other forces are at play. And it's probably that someone else was driving the car, but she claims nobody else was driving. Ticket. Oh. I know receipt ticket. Somebody probably stole it. Oh, God. Anyway. <sighs> it's $40. See the clerk. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Well, we all saw that. That's a really bad attitude, and if it were another judge, she might have been thrown out of the courtroom. But she's lucky that it's Judge Caprio, and he's trying to reason with her. ...attitude on the way out by raising her eyebrows and giving me a dirty No, work. no, I'm you know, sorry. I know you're sorry now that I brought it up. I just tell you, in the future, change your attitude, okay? All right, I'm all sorry. Right. Well, the reason why I raised my eyebrow, not raised my eyebrow on you, because right now I'm on sick leave and not working right now. So that's why I raised my eyebrow. He offers to put her on a payment plan so she can pay as little as she can afford. I'm going to get it $40 to pay that. Well, here's what you're going to do. We're going to put you on a payment plan. Okay. So you can pay as little as you, as you can afford for as long as you have to. All right. All right does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good luck. This student from Connecticut's in court for a $20 ticket. Going through the stress of court for a $20 fine is kind of unusual. No, I understand that. Oh, okay. You came all the way to court this morning for a $20 ticket. Yes. All right, which means you had to get up two hours earlier to get here and then wait here all morning. It would have been cheaper to pay the $20. <laughs> so, I, so I can't wait for the explanation. So what do you want to tell me about the ticket? Um, so I work at Amazon um, and I... She claims she works at Amazon and she's a student, so it's not full time. She only works shifts. And the parking fee is always really high, high enough that she can't actually afford it. She decided to pay one that was more affordable, but it also didn't end very well for her. And Edie to park it on the Harborside campus. Unfortunately, when I get out of work at 5 a.m., there's no campus shuttles. So I had to park the car on the street. Um, Somebody had told me that there. She usually checks the meter first, and she saw that it said free parking, so she went for it. But unfortunately, there was a time difference where she wasn't supposed to park from two to five, but the ticket was given around two o'clock. Matter of fact, the joy's apparent. <clears throat> as a matter of fact, I have a son who's a lawyer, <laughs> and yesterday he came to the office and said, "I got a ticket." I said, "You got a ticket." He says, I was in court. I said, I've heard those excuses before. That mistake is something that anyone can make. I mean, even the judge's son, who's a lawyer and knew the rules, was a victim of the circumstances once. <laughs> there you go. He paid it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. April, the matter is dismissed. Good luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> A lady comes to court after she's been prosecuted for having three different registration plates and having parking tickets issued for all of them. She doesn't speak English, so she has her son in court to help her translate and basically do the talking. Registration plates. Now let me tell you what that means to me. That means to me you got a number of tickets, you didn't pay them, so you changed the registration plate. Then you got a number of tickets on that plate, so you changed it again, saying they'll never catch us. Is that what it means to you, Inspector Quinn? Generally, that's what they do, Judge, yes. Her son claims that they have three cars in the family and they're all in his mom's name. So every ticket that he, his mom, and her husband get are all issued to her. 
and the whopping totals about $400 when adding the boot fee. And that's a discount from him because the total amount is actually over $1,000. Tell your mother right, that the fine was $1,115. Tell her that. Yeah, Talk into the mic so I can hear you. Tell her it was $1,115. I don't mean to lie. But yeah, it was, it was all my ticket. It's all his fault, so he doesn't want to tell his mom, so they had to get someone who speaks Spanish for the court to let her know. So I'm charging her $450 total. Tell her that. So in total, it's going to be $450. So instead of $1,150. Unfortunately, that's the lowest the judge can go for her. The fine's pretty huge at that amount. It goes back a few years, and honestly, it looks like they've been avoiding this. Le están dando mucho tique. Eh, yo no lo sabía que le estaban dando tique. Okay, mm -hmm. So he registered the car for him so he could go to the university. And he's receiving a lot of tickets. My sympathies are with her, but she had better straighten her son out. A woman appears in court with her five kids, and she's made everyone's jaw drop because of her kids are all around the same age. <laughs> Katie, who are these kids? Where'd you find them? Do you rent these kids outside? Uh, unfortunately, they don't go back, so <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> are there any twins here? Uh, who's the twins here? Who's a twin? Two of her kids are twins. Judge Caprio is known to love kids a lot, so he took an interest in them. He asks which of them talk the most. They pointed to one of her kids, whose name was Alex, and Judge Caprio called him to sit beside him. Oh, that's nice. Get over yeah. here. You want to be a judge? Say yes. Yes. All right. Is your mother guilty or not guilty? Not. Not. <laughs> Take your hat back. <laughs> Judge Caprio asks Alex if they should fine his mom, and he says yes, and he starts to say yes to everything. How about $35 court cost? Yes. How about five days in jail? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Inspector Quinn, get the cuffs. <laughs> How about a raise for Inspector Quinn? <laughs> no. Uh, no. <laughs> I can't win. I can't win. I gotta say, Judge Caprio is truly one of a kind. He's so understanding and patient, and most of all, a good and fair judge. Apparently, the defendant was doing a mile over the limit, which is kind of ridiculous to be fined for, so he dismisses the case. What? Big that? Big that. Case dismissed. Take case dismissed. <laughs> okay. I think you're going to be a good judge. Okay. Shake hands. An unpaid ticket has brought the defendant to court. The ticket was issued at her place of work. She recently graduated and has started working, and she's getting used to it. I have to stop. Did you stop? Um, I believe I yielded. You yielded? Instead of stopped. Oh. Oh, you thought the sign said yield? No, I knew it said um, stop, <laughs> but I was doing one of those fast turns. All right. This was at uh, 5.30 in the evening. Were you on your way to work or were you coming? Judge Caprio takes a look at the cam to check the timing of the mistake. She saw the light turning yellow, so she ran and turned as fast as she could. In your opinion, is take into consideration of what she does. Um, much harder job than I have. So I agree. Yeah. She's really strong. She had just finished a 16-hour shift, and she still had the energy to drive home. I don't know what I would have done in that situation. Maybe sleep in my car. The police officer is right to compliment her for the work that she does. Yeah. You're welcome. Hey, what he said, he asked me to dismiss your case. Oh, really? So while he's as tough as nails on one, on one half, one half of him is tough as nails, right? And Soft. the other half is he has, he's very compassionate. Not like... There's another inspector we have, you know, who's really you know, kind of tough. Yeah. Inspector Quinn. Both police officers present both vouched for her and recommended that they dismiss her case. The matter is dismissed. Thank you. Can I say that openly, Judge? I do appreciate So, basically, I have a heart of a pea, he has a heart of a walnut. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. No, blueberry. 
We're very lucky to have both Inspector Quinn and Inspector Carrigan, trust me. A lady came to court with her son and claims he was really excited to come with her to court. Judge Caprio was touched, so he asked him to come to the stage with him. First thing we're going to do is we're going to have a good attitude. Look at me. All right, you're going to have a good attitude, right? Let me see you smile. I'm going to tell you something right now. You want to get along in life? Go far? You have to have a nice attitude. You've got to be pleasant to people. You've got to make a nice impression. Right? You're supposed to Judge Caprio starts to give him some advice about being a good person and having a good attitude. And the boy listened, which is good. Your mom has a parking ticket on College Street. I actually didn't, never got the ticket, so I don't know if it's something that was left. Do you on drive? Car. Do you drive a Nissan? Yeah, I do recall the day because I don't, I don't go to Providence that often. Okay, but you so were, I do recall the you were on the street, right? Yes. Okay. She claims she never saw the ticket, but if she did, she would have paid it. It was thirty dollars, but now it's snowballed to ninety dollars. So we can charge a ninety, <laughs> sixty. Or she was willing to pay 30 or nothing. So what should we do? 30. 30. Okay. <laughs> supposed to say nothing. I do have a picture, though, of where I was parked. Well, well you, said, you, you said you were willing to pay the 30. Judge Caprio asks him again if he should charge her nothing, and he says no again. It doesn't get fairer than this. I've never seen a judge with more compassion than Judge Caprio. He probably just turned the boy's life around. Okay, the matter will be dismissed. Thank you. Get over here, you. Shake hands. Thank you. The day has been quite busy, and unfortunately for the defendant, she had to wade through it all. Her offense is crossing a red light. A hot rod or no? No. No. All right. You charge we're going through a red light on North Main and Branch. Yep. Didn't say yep. Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take a look at it. Okay. The clip unfortunately wasn't looking good for her because at first she stopped at the stop sign like, you know, everyone else on the road, but suddenly she drove forward and crossed the red light. But here's the catch. The sign says right on red after stopping and she followed it. So there's no reason for her to be there for at least one second, which is a long time for a stop. And then you made the right hand turn. So I don't know why you're here. <laughs> Dr. Quinn. Uh, you want to clearly hide an issue that violation. They might want to apologize to her for wasting her time. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things. Imagine the judge had not carefully checked the clip. Uh, uh, Alex, oh, all right, we're trying to put you at ease, but there's no reason why you should be. You stopped. You did everything you were required to do. Right? We owe you one. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you, sir. The defendant is in court for two violations, but he can only remember doing one. When he was told to come to court, he checked the previous mail to search for the other one, but couldn't find it. Ticket, sir. What do you want to tell me about these? Um, this, I'm, I'd like to just pay the speeding tickets. I, I, don't, I don't think I ever got a, anything in the mail. I went back. I, I've had other parking tickets and other things, and I paid them immediately. So I, I just I didn't know about these. So I, I'd like to pay them. And then the parking prohibited area one, I, I was... His car wasn't his at the time one ticket was issued. That was why he couldn't find it in the mail. He's so nervous and he's scared that they won't believe him. It's the ticket. Okay, thank if you. If I don't, I'll give you a big lecture on telling the truth. Okay. Okay. You believe him? It's no. not the lecture you now, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> he's the prosecutor, right? Okay. Actually, I believe you. Thank you. It's probably a previous owner, Your Honor. We could try to look it up to put it in their other name. Why not? Okay. I'll just dismiss it outright. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I brought the certificate of title from when I... He brings along a lot of evidence to prove his point that he didn't drive the car when the ticket was issued. Every ticket he gets, he pays almost immediately. <laughs> All right. Matters. One of these tickets, you were doing 31 miles an hour. Okay. We routinely dismiss those. Okay. So that's going to get dismissed. So it's going to cost you $50 okay. for the other speeding ticket. Thank you. What do you do for a living, sir? Um, at the time we moved here, Brown University brought us over. I was working in there. Judge Caprio tries making conversation with them to help him relax. He tells the judge that he's a real estate agent and his job helps him get out more, which usually increases his chances of making a violation. And the fluctuations in his business has been causing a lot of stress. It's going to be a, there's always something. So. What's the commission? 6%? Not anymore. <laughs> it, it can be. It's, it's usually 
a little less than that, but uh, interest rates are, are, are pretty high right now, so that's oh. slowing things down a little bit. So You just cost yourself a lot of money. Anyone that's going to see you is going to say, uh-huh. uh, I can negotiate, this. I can negotiate this, the price. Six, it's 6%. Good luck. 